here we go. This is where it all starts. What to some would look like three pathetically small drops, to others could be quite significant. You really want to start small with everything, start slow and build up from there. So finding drops of this scale are pretty handy. Check your bike's got room for its chain rings and the chain rings aren't going to grind out over the more sizeable drop. And then what we want to check out is the run up and the exit to the drops, the shape on the edge of the drop, and then consider how quick we're going to come in and what techniques we're going to use. Now, as I've said, we want to start slow and build up our pace, rolling into a drop nice and steady and doing lots of control braking over it and trying to bring the bike to a stop as soon as we can. It's a really good practice exercise because it gets you really good and sensitive on the brake levers, you're feeling the contact patch of the tyre and the amount of grip available to you, and you're also getting lots of repetition and loading up the body of when particularly that front wheel comes down and you've got to drive the legs down. It's all about building up that muscle memory so that when you're coming into this a bit quicker, you're just responding instinctively, you're not thinking about it. Before the drop, we want to lower ourselves, so we've got the legs to use as natural suspension and particularly to drive the legs down. Get the belly button eyeballs low and then the legs extend and we almost stay level through that feature. Let's have a look at that in action. It's probably easier to see it than it is for me to waffle on about it. Okay, so it's a real slow rolling press drop. So I'm pressing the bike down, particularly with the legs. Think about driving those legs away and pushing that back wheel down. Because if that back wheel hangs in the air, you're only on the front wheel. If there's snagglers and things down below you, they're gonna hang you up. They're gonna start to pitch you up even further. And that's when you go in OTB. So the other really cool thing about these slow speed exercises is feeling that contact patch and developing that all important muscle memory in the fingers. We're having to balance the brake pressures a lot here as the wheel's wanting to drag the, the granite fines up onto this piece of stone and then the tyre's got less adhesion on its edge. And you'll see here, this one's slightly rounded. This one we didn't bother with. It's got a little V-cut, which is always good fun to stick your tyres in. And this one's quite sort of pointy and actually undercut. So I've got minimal contact patch there and that's going to want to like, you know, just slip the rear wheel out. This one, round edge, same with the thing. Um, you also get used to the different types of rock and whether there's lichen growing on them and they're green and slippy or not. And what this leads to is as often in a section of trail that's quite technical is you're dropping, dropping, dropping almost like a staircase and you're having to change direction and turn and make little adjustments. These slow speed exercises really get the limbs working in exactly the right shape and you know, really importantly they get the brake fingers working just how you want so that you're balancing the brake pressures. When you're really confident and you're getting good, clean technique, just start to build the speed up. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples now. Um, we won't teach grandma to suck eggs. I'll just come in, I'll do one nice and steady at walking pace, and then I'll show you how quick you can go down even something of this height using what I call the press drop, putting the front wheel down first. We, you know, There's a bit of an overlap in speed where at this sort of speed, you're pressing it out at these speeds, you're having to punch and snap off of it because you're going so fast and they do have a little bit of an overlap where you can use either technique. It's all dependent on how much space you've got on the run-up and how severe the surface is and what you've got on the exit and obviously how high the drop is itself. Let's have a look at those in action. Super, so there you go. Rolling press drop on something that's of a reasonable size as well. You know, it's the noise is a little bit thump thump of the wheels coming down, slightly over exaggerating and being very affirmative to get particularly that back wheel down there. And you'll notice as well in the slow mo's that you've just seen how we're nice and low on the bike behind the handlebar. It's all about being behind the bar is a key thing. In this situation, this is maybe Skills Park, so it's obviously built for the job. We've got lots of clean entrance space, lots of clean exit space to play with as well. If you can find something similar near you, doesn't necessarily have to be built like this, could be curb stone in a quiet street. Uh, just do put in that repetition, repetition, repetition. Um, so we're getting a bit quicker in that second example and I can still press it out and that's key if I've got lots of drops or I'm in steeper gradients and I need them wheels on the floor for changing direction and controlling the speed. Um, but blatantly at that speed, I've got more than enough momentum that I can do a punch drop off of it. So let's have a look at that in a little bit more detail. So the punch drop. It's the Jackie Chan Bruce Lee manoeuvre, but what am I really talking about? What is it all about? Well, the key when we're getting that little bit quicker and we've got space 
entrance speed exit. So to get low on the bike again, and I've nicknamed it the punch drop because I think about punching and driving a bike out in front of me. I'm low behind the bar and I can snap and you know, move it on, punch it out off the drop there. Uh, you may have read or seen in other video bits, people talk about pulling a manual and yeah, you kind of can do that, but it's slightly counterintuitive. If we're doing that same accelerate and decelerate shapes when we're doing drop offs using this style of technique. But if you think about it with a manual, it's about getting the front wheel up in the air. And that's slightly counterintuitive to the fact that, particularly if you're trying to be fast, we're trying to take the shortest distance between two points. So from the edge of the drop to somewhere down there where we want to bring the bike down to land, trying to triangulate that and, and, and make that smaller. Um, if you manual up a little bit early and you get your timing wrong, obviously you start to nosedive off of the edge of the drop. Um, so yeah, you, you can do it, but it can work against you. So I like to think about it is when you're at the edge of the lip, you punch your bike out, accelerate out in front of you. Let's have a look at that in action. Okay, there's one other technique to look at. That's the wheelie drop. It's rare, unless you're a trials rider, that you're gonna likely to be doing this one, but we'll throw it in there for good measure anyway. It'd be rude to go through the feature and not cover the wheelie drop. It's a very specific set of circumstances where you've got real limited entry space and in particular, real limited exit space. You need to bring the bike down very quick. It's also a bit of an exception to the rule as this is one occasion where we do bring the front wheel upwards before we make the drop. And that's all about being able to come down on the back wheel, control that landing, bring the front wheel down in a controlled fashion off the back brake and stop the bike very, very quick. So let's have a look at that in action. It took a few attempts and we got it clean anyway. So I've done it both directions. Um, I've used the same foot to kick off with just because that's how the setup came. But if you're really looking at progressing your riding, something you want to do with all your dropping techniques is try what we nicknamed chocolate foot, your unfavored foot. So if you predominantly lead with your right, try with the left foot forward and vice versa. Simple exercise here. I've got a stone on the ground. I can cut around that to create that turn in. And then I just pick some rocks on the exit. There's a bit of a a sight line thing to look at to bring the vision into it of where I wanted to stop before where I wanted to get around. Get out there and have a play. Okay so it's not the biggest huck in the world by any means and that's not what it's about. It's about getting your technique clean and tidy. We often get problems on the setup to a drop. In this case we've got that classic thing that kind of frames the trail ahead or the scenery ahead and that's a pair of trees. So as you're approaching this drop you just get a plain horizon. You can see the sky in the background through the trees over there. And it will give you that momentary sort of pause and hesitation. But that's exactly what you don't want to do. You don't want to hesitate into drops like this. Now this is one of those where you would be silly to leap before you'd looked. And having sized it up, you'd notice that there's a big chunky root on the edge of the takeoff. Well, somebody's evidently had problems with that, so they've hacked the root away, which isn't very good for the health of the tree. However, that does mean that if you were brave, you could probably roll into it. I wouldn't be rolling into this type of drop. It's got a nice downslope there. You can float off of there nice and easy, catch that downslope and away you go. But it's this whole process of looking ahead, reading the terrain, adjusting accordingly, rinse and repeat.